Nights of AK is an international living, business, and travel lifestyle podcast and blog highlighting how to unapologetically live and work doing what you love and loving it. Other people will tell you to be responsible, play it safe, and wait for the right moments in life. However, successful people who take inspired action and make dreams a reality disagree. Join author, lifestyle consultant, mother after 40, and dream chaser, Cha Jones, each week. She interviews ordinary people who sought extraordinary opportunities and created a life of vacay. If you are tired of waiting for life to happen, need help making your dreams a reality, need inspiration, or want a life of leisure, this show is for you. I am excited to have on this episode of Life's a VK, Miss Aquania Escarnan. Her career as a diplomat for the U.S. Department of State began in 2008. While serving in Port-au-Prince, uh, Haiti, Aquania realized how many working professionals, including her own colleagues, were not prepared for an emergency or unexpected life event. The devastating 2010 earthquake demonstrated that even high income earners often did not have sufficient life insurance, proper estate planning, or savings. This experience inspired Aquania to work more closely with professionals who have the potential to build generational wealth with the right guidance and support. Today, Aquania is a financial coach, hotel owner, yay, podcast host, and life insurance producer. She is committed to helping people find financial freedom and build wealth. As a financial coach, she equips her clients with outside of the box, finance tips, debt payment plans, retirement planning, and more. With her advice, clients are able to exceed their financial and personal goals. Y'all, please welcome to this show, my friend, Aquania. I am so excited to have you today. I'm so excited to have you here today. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to be in your midst. I'm excited because I have been watching you on social media and you are doing some amazing things, but I haven't seen you since before COVID. Uh, probably around 2019. I actually I might have been 2018. It's been too long. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I kind of vicariously live through you and all that you're doing. I get your newsletters. So I get to see what you're doing. Um, and we're going to talk about all the great things that you have accomplished over the last couple of years. Yay. Let's do it. <laughs> So, okay, your day job, let's let's start there. Your day job is pretty amazing in and of itself. You work for the U.S. Department of State, correct? Yes, as a diplomat for the U.S. So, so tell, what does that mean, right? Yeah, because people want to know, tell people about this exciting career that takes a whole lot of testing and preparation to get into. Absolutely. So when I was a younger woman, I knew that I wanted to travel, live abroad and experience other cultures. And when I was in college, that's when I discovered that you could be a diplomat with the State Department and pretty much finish your degree. If you get a master's, even better, but you don't have to go to law school, which I originally was going to become an attorney and do international law. And I thought that would be my gateway to the world. But I'm so glad I discovered the Thomas R. Pickering Fellowship, which is how I was able to pay for not only three years of education, but also get to do two internships with the State Department, which allowed me to live in Ecuador and Washington, D.C. and work. 
But then after I joined, I was able to live in Haiti and Dubai and a lot of time was spent in DC and I've been able to really influence foreign policy. So for those that don't know, the US Department of State is the foreign policy agency in the government. And we work together um, all across the world and with uh, foreign counterparts to really facilitate positive relationships um, and to expedite businesses involvement and investment in other countries. We also try to help American citizens abroad whenever they have natural disasters or even birth of new children and different things that might come up. So our primary mission is to serve American citizens abroad, but we also do a lot of work in Washington. So I've had the honor of being um, a government employee for over 14 years now and allowed my family to travel with me to live in these foreign countries and to really embrace the opportunity to travel because when I lived in Dubai we had a 24-hour airport and we had an opportunity to travel almost everywhere across the globe we definitely went to each continent except Antarctica um, and Australia I never made it to Australia but I did have plans to so that's just sort of a big overview um, we have different types of jobs that you can do within what we call the Foreign Service. I specifically work on contracting and management issues and other things that um, impact the government's tax dollars and making sure they're being well spent. But I have colleagues who work on economic issues or political issues and even American Citizen Services support. So we have a lot of different ways that we help everyone from U.S. studying abroad students to Americans living abroad and um, anywhere in between businesses who want to invest in foreign countries or foreign businesses that want to invest in the U.S. So you already have a pretty amazing nine to five and it goes beyond nine to five, but just for people to understand, it's a, it's a job, right? So you work for someone, the government, and we'll talk about those good government jobs, but I wanted to have you here today because even if we just talked about your normal, regular nine to five job, that's already created a life of vacay in the definition that I use. Um, so for anyone who is new to this podcast, it's really about creating the life that you love, that gives you freedom and flexibility to do exactly what you want to do in life. And so you have since um, expanded what you do by creating um a coaching business around financials um, is called Purpose of Money. Tell us a little bit about why you created that lane and how you're thriving in it. Interestingly enough, it's related to my time in Haiti. So I was in Haiti for my first assignment as a foreign service officer, and I was a consular officer. So I worked on helping American citizens and issuing visas so Haitians and any other foreigners in Haiti who wanted to travel to the U.S. could do so, right? And they would apply for a visa at our embassies. Well, we had an earthquake in 2010, and I noticed then that major... Um, what I thought to be good government job employees with incomes did not really have savings and their affairs in order to handle um, unexpected emergencies and really found themselves in a pickle when either most of their house items were destroyed or they had to replace all their stuff, but they didn't have personal insurance and, you know, just other things that came up. And we even had some unfortunately, colleagues who, who perished in the earthquake. And um, it just brought to light all of the ways that even adults um, with good jobs and careers are not necessarily financially prepared for what might happen. And I really have always been interested in money since I was a teenager, and my dad gave me Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I've always had an interest in money, helping people with money, saving money, investing money. Uh, I started investing for retirement at 16, and I've always been a pretty good saver. So when I witnessed that, 
I decided that I needed to do more to educate adults about financial literacy and specifically women, because I was raised by a single mom and most women are underpaid or not equally paid to their male colleagues, Mm -hmm. but we're expected to build wealth from the same lower salary. And I just think that doesn't add up. So Mm -hmm. either we need to be helping women figure out how to stretch their dollars and then if possible, help them make more dollars, right? So I um, came back from Dubai years later, but Haiti kind of opened my eyes. And then when I lived in Dubai, I sort of saw a path forward when I returned to the U.S. So I came back in the U.S. in 2015. And what really solidified it for me is I read an article that said most Americans don't have $500 saved for an emergency. And I was shocked because I was like, how can $500 be what causes families to go to payday loans and to get off budget and get off track and potentially Mm -hmm. mess up their finances, I know we can do better. So I started out on Facebook, just doing a challenge where it's, you know, save a dollar more than you did last week. And so eventually we had saved $52 in that week for 52 weeks in a year. And I helped people get to that 500, actually more than that, because I stuck to the challenge. You saved over 1300 bucks, but it was just getting out there. And I gotten a lot of encouragement from friends and family to keep doing it. So then I literally Googled, you know, how do you become a freelance writer to talk about finances? And I found my first freelance gig that same year and wrote for that client for four plus years. And I realized then that you could actually talk about what you love and make extra money. So once I realized that, I started to think of other ways I could help people. And one of the things I did was I got licensed to sell life insurance a year later. And I used that as my first certification or license to open up the conversation about money. And I chose life insurance because it was the area where I saw Black people in real need because they were using GoFundMe to pay for funerals instead of life Mm -hmm. insurance. Mm -hmm. And I was committed to end that process because I said, (laughs) right, we can do better. And I don't think the founders of GoFundMe really intended for the platform to raise money for that cause. Right. Right. And most people don't realize that life insurance doesn't just provide for a funeral. It can also provide for your future, for your family when you're not there or the income that you used to provide now that you're not there. So. I use that as the gateway to open a conversation. And then I turned it into a brand. It's a website now, it's a podcast, it's a merchandise. It's also, you know, just a way that women can relate to their own purpose for money. You know, I never define the purpose of money for others. I allow them to define it for themselves, but I provide wealth building strategies across the platform, specifically geared towards women, but they're, there are tips that men can use too. And I have male clients for insurance and I have male clients for coaching, but I I do prioritize women because I see the impact we can make. And I see the numbers like women are starting businesses in record numbers and Mm -hmm. we're raising families or head of household in record numbers. So I still continue to put women as my primary audience. That's, that's wonderful because there are so many things that we are not able to do as people because we feel financially strapped and money is you know I think of money and I think of freedom and I think of creating a life of vacay and what that really means talk to me about what that if you had to define it for yourself what life of vacay in terms of wealth and financial freedom for me life of vacay is really living the life on your terms, the way you want to, vacationing when you want to, working when you want to, it's really a position of being in a position of options. I have the option to work today because I have more than enough saved and invested, or I have the option to travel today because I have a vacation fund and I've been saving for my next vacation every paycheck. So when you invite me to visit you in Mexico, it's not a problem (laughs) because the money is there. You know, I have always prided myself 
in giving people the freedom to make their own choices, including if your thing is a luxury bag every month, then that you have the money to do that. I'm not a judgmental person. I think people should invest in what makes them happy and what makes sense for them. So if your priority is nice dinners and bags, then great. Let me help you create a budget where you can pay for what you prioritize, but then you also take care of your household too. You know, it's all about understanding if you have enough. If you don't have enough, I'm the frank and honest coach that says, you need to make more money. How are we going to do that? Whether it's a side hustle, part-time job, or applying to more lucrative positions, looking for that promotion, because where you are is not helping you grow and it's not helping your pocket. Those are all realities that I'll present to clients to let them know, like, you can live the life you want to live, but you have to prioritize and you have to start. You have to start. Some people, they've already lost time. They can't start early like I did, but they can get started. And I've worked with women who are 25 and 45 or even 10 years from retirement. I have a couple of clients of 10 years from retirement. They haven't even started saving and I get them on track to be able to retire. So I think like, you have to just be open and coachable. And you also need to know what you want your life to look like. Like I tell my husband, I want to take a trip every quarter and if possible, every month. So I'm very clear that I need to put more money in my vacation fund than maybe someone else would, because that is a majority of what gives me joy and what gives my family joy. And I want to not, and I'm the type of person, I'm not just traveling by myself even though I do that sometimes, but I'm also traveling with my family and I have two boys, a husband, and I have in-laws that tend to want to go on the trips too. So I have to plan my vacations in a way that allows them to save and contribute on a schedule they can afford too. But then also being realistic when sometimes if they can't afford it, they're not going to go, you know? Um, But I think- that's where the conversation starts is what is your vision for your ideal life? And now how can we put the money behind that so you can live and do the things that you want to do? Right. Now you said a whole lot, but I really kind of want to talk to those people, especially women who feel like they can't afford to move forward, either start a business that they want to start, live the life that they want to live um, because they're financially bootstrapped. Um, They have all this debt and they're watching their friends and living vicariously on Facebook or Instagram through all these wonderful pictures and they see people doing the things that they want to do. What advice do you have for them? And give me a couple pointers on what you would tell someone who is like starting at that ground zero and they're trying to live a life of vacay, but They really can't afford it right now. I think we have to set expectations and goals, right? So when I'm working with someone who's never worked with a coach or never really taken a hard look at their finances, sometimes we have to realize where we are. You have to understand where you stand. So for most people, that means pull out the bank statements, pull out the credit card statements, look at the pay stubs and really know how much do I make and how much is my life costing me? And once you do those numbers, a lot of people have some aha moments because they may not realize how much they're spending on Uber or Lyft, or they don't even know how much they're wasting on eating out. If that's not the goal for them, right? Maybe they're eating out for convenience or maybe they're eating out because they just think it's cheaper because they're doing five or $10 here and they don't realize that's adding up to more than they wanted to spend. I had one client who she told me, oh, I just take Uber's $5 a day to and from the metro to my apartment because I don't want to walk. And I said, well, how much is that costing you? She had no idea. I said, give me your bank statement. $400 later, she realized she was spending 400 bucks a month on Ubers and Lyft and she was paying a car note. I'm like, that's two cars. Like, is that really what you intended to do? And a lot of times the answer is no. I had no idea because in her mind, it was just $5 a day. So the first thing I would say to someone who tells me they can't do something or they don't have the money is to prove it. Show me the numbers, look at a budget, put all your numbers into the budget, and then tell, show me that you have a negative balance at the end or show me where you're spending money 
that you had no idea it was that much. And then the second thing I would say is let's look at where you can cut spending. If you're already scraping by and you, you swear everything is going to essentials, then you are someone who needs to make more money. And that could be starting out with a part-time job where you don't need to bring anything to the table other than your skills and expertise. There's a lot of virtual jobs out there now. You could be a virtual assistant. You could do graphics. You can do affiliate marketing where you're selling other people's products. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can make additional income passively and actively. Um, when I first started my job, even with the government, I was working at Ann Taylor not just because I wanted the suits at a discount, but also because <laughs> <laughs> I was paying for my wedding and my husband and I were committed not to enter our marriage into debt and having a wedding was this expense neither one of us had really planned for other than a year of our engagement. So in order to bring a little bit more money into the family before the wedding, six months before our wedding, I got a job at Ann Taylor and not even, no, the year before my wedding. So the year of our engagement, we saved each month for the wedding. And that whole year I worked at Ann Taylor and I okay. made that extra money on a weekly basis. And every week I paid a different vendor for the wedding. So when you do get this part-time job or this additional income, it's very important that you earmark its purpose before you spend it. Because if you don't, you're just going to make more money and then you're not going to put it towards what you were supposed to, like paying off debt, paying for a wedding or putting extra money into your budget so you can live the best life. And then you'll not be making the progress that you wanted to. So I definitely know that there are women out there who are just not making enough. And a lot of times you may need to uh, get education or skills to help you qualify for more money, look for higher paying jobs, push yourself out there and apply for opportunities that you may not think you're qualified for, but you may be more than qualified for, and then negotiate your salary so that you have the additional income. For those who would rather do the side hustle route, you can definitely look up what skills do you have. I knew I was a good writer. I knew that I liked to talk about money. So I started in freelance writing. Now I do freelance writing on finances. I do email marketing. Um, I ghostwrite emails for clients who don't have time to write their own emails. And I love it. And emails take less time than articles, but they pay the same. So right. <laughs> there's always a way to take a skill you already have and monetize it. You just need to look for the people who are looking for that skill in their business and putting yourself out there. And in the beginning, you may not be able to charge top, lot, top dollar until you get testimonials or more experience doing that job for someone else. But once you get a couple of clients at that discounted rate, you can more than charge what you're worth to the next client, right? But that's what I would do. I would start with knowing your numbers so you can prove I can't afford my lifestyle or mm -hmm. I can't afford the lifestyle I want. Then um, find a way to make the extra money, whether it's working for someone else or working for yourself. And then earmarking a purpose for that money so that it goes to your intentions um, and, and give yourself grace because you'll need time. If you, if you have a lot of debt, for example, and you're getting extra money to pay down debt, in the beginning, it might seem slow and frustrating, but when you see the interest going down and the balance going down, it will get better for you. Um, you just have to stay committed to the process because the only way to fail is to quit. So when I think about these women who come to you and they're entrusting that you will help them create the life that they desire to live or have the business that they want to establish, showing so, so, uh, showing the proof, like, hey, here's my st uh, statements, look at these statements and then tell me where I'm in the red or how I can adjust or move things that can be scary in and of itself because you're like opening the book and a lot of times people don't like to be transparent uh talk just briefly about overcoming fears because some part of moving forward is really about overcoming it the 
the fears that we've created ourselves, the self-talk, um, why we can't do something, how it won't work. And I can imagine if I'm coming to you for the very first time, I'm working with you and you say, hey, okay, I need your bank statements. What? <laughs> you know, like, oh, because because that is going to free you at some point. However, a lot of times we don't move forward in things because it means that I have to show my failures or what I deem as failures, right? Or I'm having to be transparent in a place that I've been lying to myself. So how do you suggest that someone gets enough courage to just be like, you know what, here it is, this, you know, I want to move forward and I'm going to be committed to this, but I basically have to show you my dirty draw. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hate to say it, but you either going to show it or you're going to stay where you are. I mean, what's mm -hmm. the worst case scenario? Is it staying where you are? Or what if you could improve your life tremendously by just opening the book and being transparent? The reason you hire a coach is because you're ready to move forward and make a change. If you're not ready to make a change, you can buy my spreadsheets. You can check out my master classes. Like, I encourage you to watch those things. And if you want to try to do it on your own, do it on your own. But one of the reasons people hire a coach is because the coach is going to push them to get out of their comfort zone. And I really don't have time for excuses. You either want to change your life or you don't. There's really no in between, right? And right. you can't just tell yourself, I failed. Because first of all, you might not have. If you look at the numbers, because a lot of this happens too, people look at the numbers and they're like, oh, I've actually been able to keep, you know, my food down to a reasonable expense when I thought I was spending like crazy over there. And I actually just need to take this money that I've been shopping with and put it into investing instead, because that's more aligned with my values and my goals. And the fact of the matter is none of us can change the past. So I'm not here to judge you for your past because I can't, I can't go back. I can't mm -hmm. unbuy whatever purchase you feel guilty about buying, right? Now I can't encourage you to sell it. There's plenty of times where I've said, do you really need that product purchase, whatever? Can you resell it? And I've had clients resell stuff on eBay and make back more than what they spent. So everybody's different, but mm -hmm. they're not, right? At the end of the day, you have to decide, do I want to change my life? If the answer is no, then stay where you are. Right. Live the life you've been living, be miserable if you're miserable and be done. But if you feel like I'm tired of this, I want somebody to show me where I can make changes, then work with someone who can help you get there or find a girlfriend. If you want to have an accountability partner that you're willing to be vulnerable with, then be vulnerable with that person. But I've always found that you need somebody who's going to push you and might be a little disconnected from you because they're not going to see your expenses the same way you do. They're not going to um, be attached to your details like you are. Mm -hmm. And they might help you see a different perspective. Like I've told people all the time, you're in a great place. You thought you were in a bad place, but you're in a great place because here's where you are. You have a little bit of savings, not enough, but here's where you can add to it. You have started saving in your work retirement account but maybe you can add more. Or if you're not getting your matching contribution from your employer, you need to start that the next paycheck. I do a lot of things in my first sessions with people that gives them action items they can execute right away. It doesn't require another six months. It, it just requires taking my advice, right? And then you can start to see the difference maybe in a couple of weeks, depends on what the change was but you're not going to change if you're not willing to change. So yeah, that's yes, my thing. Definitely. And you have to start somewhere. You know, I see a lot of people who sit in misery because they're not willing to take the first step. And the first step is really the hardest one because you're just convincing yourself you can do it. And once you take the first step, you start seeing the path clear and all of those things that you thought were challenges can then be used to help you. And you start moving in the direction that you want to go. But if you're sitting saying, I don't want to show people my ugly and I don't want to be transparent, then guess what? You're going to be in the same place that you were 
last year, this time, this same time next year, because you're not willing to move forward. So you have to get out your own way. That's extremely important because life is what you make it. And if you're still going through the thing that you say hurts you, um, I always think of the dog that's sitting on the porch, sitting on the nail, um, just in pain, but the dog won't get up. And so once that dog is in enough pain, the dog will get up and then it'll move forward. Same thing for you. If you're not living the life that you choose to live, you don't have your finances in order. It's about getting them in order. You don't have a wheel. It's time to get your a wheel. You don't have life insurance. It's time to get you life insurance because those are those things are important. And we talk about health all the time and health creates wealth. But if you don't have the financial wealth, then you're not going to be able to sustain the life that you want to live. And you probably won't have the health that you want to have so that you can maintain the life that you are living. Um, Because living is really about the action, the part of life. (laughs) So you have to make way for that. Talk to me about, or my listeners, about what you really love And you are very passionate, I can tell, about finances, about financial peace, and being able to help people use their money in a purposeful way. So what excites you so much about finances and helping others? I don't know. I just found it to be the thing that can change anyone's life. I mean, when you have enough money, to leave a legacy for your family, you could change the trajectory of your kids. Leaving life insurance, which think about it, you can buy an insurance policy for more money than you actually have. You can buy a million dollar life insurance policy and you don't have a million dollars. But if you die, which we're guaranteed to do, now your family is a millionaire, like Mm -hmm. instantly tax-free at that. So imagine the life they could live with a million dollars and the knowledge to do something with it and potentially changing how they move forward in life, how they invest in life, what businesses they they have in life. And so, you know, what drove me initially was just the idea from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that everybody doesn't have to be an employee. Every, you know, you can create a uh, early retirement, you can have businesses, you can be an owner, you can have entrepreneurship really set you in a position to control how your life is lived. But I'm also a fan of the everyday millionaires who are nine to five employees who consistently save in their retirement accounts and they invest outside of work and they keep their expenses down and they don't have a lot of debt and they're able to become significantly wealthy as well. I think the path is possible for whether you're an entrepreneur or an employee, you just need to have the right guidance to do it. And I'm also driven by the results. I mean, I see it happening where, you know, even in my own life, I used to invest in rental properties and it wasn't anything fancy. My husband and I rented out our first condo, but now I invest in hotels and now I invest in apartment syndications. I've grown, you know, I've taken the money that's grown over time and I've invested in bigger opportunities where the payout is better. It didn't happen overnight. It took 10 plus years to get to that position where one, I had the capital to invest in these type of opportunities and two, I had the knowledge, but I sought it out. I went within my network and I asked for expertise in real estate to help me learn how to invest in commercial real estate, how to invest in hotels, how to invest in apartments. I read books. I listened to podcasts like yours. I took the time to learn and I put out to God that that's what I wanted. You know, when I put the money aside to invest in a hotel, I didn't have a hotel and I didn't even know I would ever buy a hotel. What I did was I said, God, I have this money. Thanks to you. I want to invest in a passive real estate opportunity. And I want you to bring the right people in my life to help me make the best decision. And literally three months later, I met someone who invests in hotels, who's now like a sister to me. And broke down the process and helped me understand to the point where like, 
we both can talk about hotel investing like experts. She's okay. been in it much longer than me, but I've learned so much from her and she didn't charge me to learn from her. She just wanted me to grow. Now, I'm not saying all mentors are going to be free, but what I am saying is if you're passionate about something and you need to figure out what that something is for yourself, then you should dive into it. You should learn about it and then allow God to set a way and a path forward for you to get into that if that's his will. Um, but that's really what I've done. And I've just taken that seed that was planted at 16 and kind of let it grow and continue to spread that knowledge to other people and hopefully plant seeds in their minds as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Cause you, and you just said a whole lot, like <laughs> it, it doesn't happen overnight. And I think a lot of times people look at other people and they think that they just blew up and they don't look at all the planning and preparation that it took for them to be successful. So no, it doesn't happen overnight. This is not about getting rich quick. This is really about being steady and consistent and following your dreams with passion and just being persistent over time, then you will get the result that you desire to have. But you also talked about um, just asking for help because so many people don't get what they want because they, they're scared someone's going to say no. You don't know what someone's going to say until you ask them. And if they say no, okay, that wasn't the person. Go to the next person and just be persistent about learning and trying to find the answers. And Google is your friend. Now, Google will not tell you everything. So sometimes it is necessary that you find a living human being to have a conversation with and sometimes you will have to pay them you get a coach you are amazing because I can't say that I know anyone else that owns a hotel or or is part owner in a hotel especially a black woman so when I saw that I was super excited I told everybody I could possibly tell <laughs> I forwarded your email that you sent with your newsletter and I liked, I think I liked everything I could like about it on uh, Facebook because that's an um, uh, amazing adventure to be able to be on. And then also just imagine like, it's almost like th for the first time when people saw a black president like, wow, I can now see that I can do this. And just being able to have you in my presence and know, wow, I go buy into a hotel and that hotel is creating a legacy for myself and for my family. That's amazing. And I wanted to personally be able to say thank you for doing that. I uh, wanted <laughs> to say, I'm glad that I know you. And I'm glad that you are able to share that part of your journey because it is powerful. It's amazing, actually. Um, but yeah, you are doing some amazing things. But tell us how this, as well as your nine to five job, creates the freedom for you to have a life of vacay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that love and support and for reading my newsletter and sharing it. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause it's nice to know that someone other than my great aunt and my mother read it and read support it, it and share it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so a lot of people ask me, you know, why do I work so much? Why do I have so many jobs? Why am I not a full-time entrepreneur? I have chosen to take a intentional path to full-time entrepreneurship in making sure that I don't take the leap until my business can fully support the income that I would like to have to maintain my lifestyle. My family and I travel four or five times a year and we prefer international destinations with beaches. My husband likes to play golf and tends to do so almost every other weekend. And I like to give extravagantly to my family, which means um, nice gifts that they need and want but also experiences. I'm a really big experienced person. So even if, for example, my family comes on a trip and pays their own way, I will still cover some adventures and activities that they would never think to plan or pay for. Um, one example is like over Christmas when we were in Jamaica, 
I really wanted to have this dress experience where you wear this flowy long dress that's wrapped around their body to fit you perfectly. And then it's a photographer who takes your picture. So you have a photo shoot and a makeup artist comes and does your makeup. And I remember when I told my mom I wanted to do this, initially, I wasn't sure if I should pay for it, if I should give people the option to pay for themselves. But I had in my heart to make this an activity that all the women did on a trip. And it was a mix between friends and family. So then I also had that, you know, do I pay for my friends and my family or just my family kind of dilemma. So somebody I was planning a trip with was like, well, you should just tell them what it costs and give them the option and then see what response you get. So I told my mother and my mother was like, I don't want to pay my money to do that. And I said, okay, fine, I'll pay for you to do it. But because I want you to, I want us to take pictures together. I think this is going to be very memorable. And I had a feeling you wouldn't quite get it, right? Girl, we go to Jamaica. She falls in love with the makeup artist. She loves her makeup. (laughs) She becomes a ham for the camera. Like when I tell you she did all the poses. (laughs) And then she was just like, she still can't stop talking about it. And so- in my mind, that was a priceless investment of my dollars, right? Into an experience that my mother will have for the rest of her life and pictures that she will have for the rest of her life. Cause then I went and I printed the picture. So I was like, this gift's gonna keep on giving because yes. that Christmas <laughs> gift became her birthday gift, which, you know, like Mother's Day photo, everything. Um, but that's my intentional path, right? I've been utilizing my nine to five income to initially support the start of my business. Now I'm very fortunate that my business funds itself, but I'm still tracking my revenue in my business to make sure it's on track to replace my income in the next year or two, giving me then more options. Do I continue my government service or do I become a full-time entrepreneur? But I just didn't want to be an entrepreneur like my mom, who was an entrepreneur most of my life. She sold insurance. She sold ATM machines. She did credit card services. She had a lot of different businesses that stemmed off of her accounting degree. But my mother worked harder. She she worked for herself. She did all the work herself. She tried to um, really be in industries before it was really big. Like she was the one trying to tell gas stations, you need to take credit cards. And they were like, no, we take cash. Like we we don't understand why we need to take cards. How many people do you know go to a gas station now and pay with it with cash? Like very few, right? (laughs) So, but my mom was trying to get at that time an industry on board with the process and they didn't understand. And then when she really, when they really started to get the hang of it or understand it, banks came in and they were offering the equipment for free or they were, you know, given deep discounts to the gas station owners that it just became cost prohibitive for her to keep that business. So one of the things I tell my mom all the time is, you know, she taught me grit. She taught me that entrepreneurship can be hard, but what I chose to do is utilize my business to hire other women and others to help me grow and to not try to do it all on my own and, and to not struggle. My mom struggled throughout her career as an entrepreneur and I just am not going to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in answer to your question, my job has given me flexibility to be able to run a business. And in the beginning of my business, it gave me the flexibility to do things for free. I used to coach people for free. I think that's what you need when you're starting out to one, learn how to work with people to get them the results that they need and you want them to get. And I also feel like it helped me take risks that I probably wouldn't have taken if I was a full-time entrepreneur and every dollar that I was about to make was life or death for me, you know? Right. Oftentimes that's the case. People have to start doing things free. And it's great that you have a day job that you actually love. And that is something that you wanted to do and versus something that you know, you're stuck doing because you can't do anything else or you feel like you can't do anything else. But it's also great that you have positioned yourself because of the things that your mother was able to teach you 
not necessarily hands on like she meant to be probably teaching you, but she was doing something and, and making choices and and even making mistakes that then allowed you to be able to disregard those mistakes or to learn from them because. So oftentimes we have people that have preceded us that we're standing on the shoulders of. And if I'm, I'm sure she's really proud to be able to see that you took the same tenacity and then you shifted and then you made this work for you. And oftentimes you have so many people who have come before you us and they've done all this hard work and they paved the way and then nobody shows up and walks on that path right mm -hmm. um and it's it's almost disheartening to see other people like really struggle to make ways and she opened some doors for you so that you can do things differently and to create success and I'm glad that you had her as a mentor and I hope that she's able to see that she was that for you um, and she gets to go on some amazing trips I see the pictures <laughs> so I'm glad that this has created freedom for you to not only be able to do these things for your family but to extend it to other people in your family, even outside of your family. Whenever you need me to go on a trip, holla, <laughs> holla at me because I like your taste. I like your taste. Okay. So one thing that I like to ask everyone is to talk about if there was, because everybody doesn't see this the same way, but were there any fearful moments or did you eliminate the fear because you were planning and preparing? Oh, I have fear all the time. I have imposter syndrome. I have the negative voices in my head. I am human. And the only thing that brings me back to reality is I stay in prayer. I have my own coach and I am in a couple of mastermind groups where I meet with other entrepreneurs who are ahead of me and can help me understand that I'm still on the right track, right? But I think it's human to have these thoughts like, oh my God, is this it? Am I on the right path? I mean, honestly, investing in a coach was one of my biggest decisions in 2020. And I was like, I've never paid that much for anything in my life. I don't know. Should I do this? Should I? And in the first four weeks of working with her, she pushed me to hire my first virtual assistant who is still my virtual assistant and is amazing and helped me grow. Like be, being able to pass on admin tasks has helped me focus on the fun stuff that I do like to do. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. Um, my coach pushed me to put out my first course. And prior to that, I had no products. I had no digital products. I was sitting here always talking about money, but everything I did was active. Do this webinar, coach this person, put this website up, add this thing. And I had nothing that people could just go to and sign up and then hang out with me later if they want to go further and work together. That was the $10,000. Um, I made $10,000 last year on one of my digital products. Income okay. I never would have had if my coach didn't tell me like, girl, you better just publish. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm in my head like, it doesn't have this. And she's like, does it work? <laughs> Right. Can you data test it, you know, because that's the other thing. I was so afraid to put out what I consider to be an imperfect product. And then people use it and was like, no, this is perfect because where I am in my journey, this is what I need. Right, right, right. And then I was constantly over delivering anyway. So people were like, you gave too much. Like now I'm like, my mind is open and I want to do the next step. And what's the next step? So to be honest, I feel like nobody's perfect. <laughs> And if you're, if you do pursue entrepreneurship, you're always going to be scared, right? A little bit scared when you're making big decisions, but that doesn't mean you don't keep moving, right? I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. I wake up every day. Thank you, Jesus. What are we going to do today? Let me focus on that. And then I go from there. I, I have my big plan of what I would like to see happen in a year, but then I'm like flexible too. You know, I don't, I don't always get it done when I want it to be done because certain things come in to play, but I don't get discouraged. You know, I'm just like, okay, 
well, what's a better way to do this? You know, or I had one course I taught live this year. And then when I tried to teach it again, the second time I didn't have as many signups. Doesn't mean I stopped teaching the content. I just said, oh, there's a different way to do this. And now I'm making changes to that. So every experience provides an opportunity to grow and to learn. And I'm just trying to embrace that for what it is, you know, and um, not allow those instances to hold me down because they're not failures to me. Mm -hmm. I think they're learning lessons, but they're not failures. They're just an opportunity, opportunity for me to revisit something and do it better. You have left so many nuggets. I normally ask you, <laughs> like, give me three nuggets to leave the listeners. But you, like, the whole conversation has been so eye-opening. And you have given people way more content than necessary for them to at least decide, make a you know choice that I want to do something different. I want to have this particular life. And then here are some steps that I need to take. But I already know that there are some people who need to get their finances in order and they need help. So how do they get in contact with you? Absolutely. Check out thepurposeofmoney.com or follow me on Instagram at the purpose of money, where you can get wealth building tips. I'm on Twitter every now and again at purpose underscore money, but my main hangout spot is Instagram. And I do love when people sign up for my email list on my website and you'll get to hear from me on a weekly basis. You guys, if you are trying to figure it out, you know that you haven't made the best decisions in the past, but you're ready to move forward, do something different. You want to start a new business. You want to have that great vacation. You want to go take those pictures over in Jamaica. However, you want to move forward, just do it. Contact her, let her know what the issue is, and then allow her to do her work and create magic with you. It's not something you have to do alone. She's going to help you. So thank you for joining me, Aquanya. It's always a pleasure. And I look forward to talking to you real soon. Everybody check out the podcast, like and share it if you like it, and make sure that you tell somebody else. All right. It's been a blessing. You have been listening to Life's a Vacay podcast. Thank you for tuning in today. Every day you have a choice. So choose yourself and never allow your circumstances to dictate the life you live. Whatever you don't like, you can change. Remember, nothing happens overnight. But know that when you set goals and take inspired action, whatever you desire can come in perfect timing. Never give up on creating the life you deserve. Don't anticipate your next vacation when you could be living a whole life on vacation. Until next time, I'm your host, Cha Jones. Please remember to like and share this podcast so that others can be inspired. Peace.